The last lab value we're going to talk about when it comes to arterial blood gas results is the base excess and base deficit. Now, this is actually one lab value that technically goes by two names. So the official definition of base excess is the level of excess or possibly deficiency of base present in the blood. The normal value is negative two to positive two milliequivalents per liter. So if the number is negative, it's actually referred to as a base deficit. If the number is positive, it is referred to as a base excess. So while base deficit and base excess refer to the same lab result number, they are not the same thing. Now, most people will actually just use the words base excess and then they'll tell you it's a negative base excess. It's not completely wrong, but it's important that you understand what I mean when I'm saying a base excess versus a base deficit. So the meaning of the base excess value is that it is a strong indicator of the metabolic component of acid-base balance. A high positive level, in other words, uh, a level greater than positive two, indicates metabolic alkalosis. This means we have extra base in our blood. Most commonly, this is an excess of bicarb in the blood. If we have a low negative level, which means we have a level less than negative two, this indicates metabolic acidosis. This means we have a deficiency of base in our blood or a state of acidosis. Remember that metabolic acidosis could be caused by too many acids or it could be caused by not enough base. So the trick here is if you see an anion gap, you know that there are extra acids floating around in our blood that we're not able to measure, and therefore that is the likely cause. If you don't have an anion gap, there's a good chance that this uh, condition is caused by a loss of base, such as in diarrhea. Now, while the base excess is a strong indicator for the metabolic component, it does have some limitations that make it a little bit less reliable. One of those limitations is in any patient that has some sort of underlying or chronic illness that causes acid-base disturbances. So if I have a client with renal failure who lives in a state of metabolic alkalosis, they may have a super high base excess all the time, like they live at a base excess of six. And then you see their base excess come down and you look at it and it's zero. And you're like, oh, they're perfect. It's wonderful. But actually, they're clearly having some sort of acidotic process on top of their chronic alkalosis, right? Now, when someone with COPD may live in a chronic respiratory acidosis state, and so I may not notice a change in their base deficit, or I may see this really negative number, assume that they're septic when actually they live there all the time. Now, the other thing that can create a falsely high base excess is fluid resuscitation. So the best way to overcome any of these limitations is to look for trends in the client's base excess numbers. So if somebody has a base excess of six, and then the next day, it's two, which is normal. And then the next day, it's negative one, which is also normal. If we're just looking at these individual numbers, we're not going to see the red flags that this patient is trending towards acidosis, right? So it's extremely important that you evaluate the entire blood gas as a whole and that you look for these trends. None of the values that we've talked about in this course should ever be used in isolation. You should always consider the big picture of what's going on. You can also take values obtained from your blood gas and compare them to other clinical findings. You can look at things like uh, the anion gap. You can look at the PF ratio. All of these things are going to help you to see the big picture and really evaluate whether these individual values are good or bad for your specific patient. So let's recap. Remember that base excess is all about the extra or the deficiency of base in our bloodstream. Extra base is alkalosis. Deficiency is acidosis. Remember that extra base would give you a high positive or an alkalosis and deficiency in base would give you a low negative or acidosis. 
Make sure that you're looking at the trends in your patient's lab values because chronic illness or some other interventions might actually change the patient's baseline. And as always, look at the entire ABG as a whole, as well as comparing it to any of the other lab values to get a good big picture of what's actually going on with your patient and what your patient needs. All right, so that's it for base excess and base deficit and our entire ABG course. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson and don't hesitate to go back through any of the lessons in this course that you need clarity on. Now go out and be your best selves today, guys. And as always, happy nursing.